G'day, I'm Rebecca. Today we're going to talk about converting any bike to electric. Of course, anything becomes possible when you choose the bike that's going to suit your application. You might even choose something wild and crazy like my purple people mover here. Proper road train to take the whole family and pick it. Well, every bike is different, so choosing uh, the right kit to match a bike is one thing. Being able to overcome the challenges of a particular bike becomes another thing. Nothing's impossible, but some things do take a little more effort. So, why don't we talk us through this for the fun in the meantime. Woo! Okay, so if we take a look at this bike as an example, of course, you'll probably notice it's already electric, but if we ignore the battery pack, the controller bag, and the motor in the wheel, we'll just look at it as though it's a normal bike. So if we look at from the ground up the things we need to look at for an e-bike conversion. So this bike has disc brakes. That's no problem at all. You can mount the disc to the side of the motor. So normally you just take your old disc off, put it on the side of the motor. In some cases they're press fitted, so you might need a new disc rotor. There is a bit of fiddling around to get uh, the disc in the right position. So sometimes you need spaces. That kind of thing can be um, pretty easily adjusted in most cases. The cassette comes straight off your existing wheel as well, it mounts on the side. Uh, there's, there's an issue if you do have an internal gear hub because you can't combine that with the motor. So you do need an external gear set. Single speed is even fine for a rear wheel conversion. If you want to fit a front wheel motor, that's generally pretty fine with a, a lower powered motor. So not the higher powered motors unless you're going to reinforce the motor with torque bars to make sure there can't be any spin in the dropouts. So front wheel motor often goes very well with a rear mounted rack battery on our 250 watt kits. If you do often take your front wheel off the bike, uh, say to transport the bike in the car or on the roof, it's not so easy once you've got a motorised hub in there. So they do have plugs, you can unplug it, uh, but you do need a spanner, it's no longer a quick release front wheel. So that might be something to factor in. Moving up the bike, we might notice this bike actually has a challenging aspect in that it has an external bottom bracket. We can see that there's no space between the bottom bracket and the crank arm here in order to fit the pedelec sensor. This becomes an issue, uh, they're not too common on bikes but uh, if you do have an external bottom bracket see our pedelec video soon to, soon to be posted uh, for some uh, modifications you can make to still install the pedelec on the bottom bracket. This bike has the battery perfectly mounted in the frame. So if you have a nice straight um, down tube, you'll find there's water bottle mounts under here. So two little threaded rivets, uh, which will normally hold the battery perfectly. In some cases, they may not be in the right position. So in some cases, you may need to drill in another hole just so that you can attach the battery bracket solidly. We use riv nuts, so we drill a hole and put a threaded rivet into that hole and then press fit it. So the battery mounting in the frame is ideal for the weight being central and low. If you don't have that option, so some bikes have a curvy frame or the triangle is too small, you might have a suspension, uh, resuspension in there. So in that case, you're a bit more limited. It is possible to mount some batteries underneath the down tube. This one's perfectly suited to a, one of our Ranger batteries. Some of the other challenges we often find on a bike come across at the handlebars, really. Uh, the type of gear shifters, if you have the, the, the style of thumb push and tap, you'll often find that this would clash with a throttle. If you desire to have a throttle, which is not strictly road legal, but a lot of people like to have one for takeoff. You can find these gear shifters clash with the throttle. So for that reason, we often put the throttle on the left hand side, a thumb style throttle, so that uh, the difficult gears to get to, because we've moved them away a little bit, um, are the less often used front derailleur gears. Also with these type of gear shifters, because the brake lever is integrated into the gear shifter, it's not possible to install the brake levers that come with the kit. So the type that actually have 
an electric cable coming out as well as the place for you to fit your uh, brake wire. So you do have the option to change your shifter to perhaps a twist style shifter which clashes less with the throttle as well so that is a fairly good option for a lot of people and then you can fit this brake lever. If you don't want to do that or if you have hydraulic brakes you may want to fit a sensor, a brake sensor cut out. So the point is that when you apply the brakes you don't have any motion from the motor so it disengages any motion. This bike here we've fitted one of our cable type sensors uh, so you actually have to fit this onto the cable, cut the sheath back a little bit and the wire, the brake wire runs through that sensor. Okay so this is obviously a different type of bike entirely. The curvy frames means we're not going to be able to fit a battery anywhere there hence it's been mounted with a rack battery. Okay so fitting a rack battery you obviously need the mounting points on the frame up near the seat post and down here. Most bikes have these. So the idea is you move the uh, struts up and down to get the correct height and these bars can move through here to get the right amount of level. So this is probably sitting a little bit down at the back. The reason for that is so that we could get the seat post all the way down for our demo bike for short asses. This bike here is a fairly cheap old bike with a single crank, so a one piece crank. So it was a little more difficult for us to fit the pedelec but we did manage to fit the standard pedelec. We just had to take the sensor part actually apart. So you can see that there in the zoomed in shot. Other than that this bike was quite simple on the handlebars due to having only one brake lever so this is a back pedal a coaster brake front wheel motor on this bike matches well for the weight distribution on the bike with the battery at the back anyway so no gears as well this bike is a single speed so uh, we've got the handlebars fairly free on the left hand or the right hand side for a throttle so no problem setting up uh, on this bike the front brakes are the center pull type uh, they're really a bit rubbish so we did replace the pads at least but uh, probably my suggestion would be if you are putting a front wheel motor that you have reasonable hopefully side pull caliper brakes uh, so that you can stop in a hurry when you need to. So this being a full suspension bike we're very lucky to have enough fra frame space here to mount one of the frame mounted batteries. It is getting a bit tight with the control but that's fine. Um, it's not possible to mount a rack battery in a secure way with the compression at the back end. I tell a lie, it is possible. If you were to use mounting points down here and then mounting points up here, but you would be defeating the purpose of having rear shocks. So always worth having the frame mounting battery on a full suspension bike. This one's fitted with a mid mount motor, so we don't need to talk about the wheels. They're left as they are. Um, the, when we come up to the handlebars, uh, this has hydraulic disc brakes, so neither the brake levers that come with the kit nor the cable sensor that we looked at before work for this bike, so we're using one of the magnetic sensor types. Here is the brake sensor which has been glued and siliconed into position and the magnet which is on the lever. When the magnet moves away from the sensor, that cuts power to the motor. So you can see the sensor here and a magnet. There's a couple of different examples of magnets that we have. And usually you'll fit this on the underside out of sight. With the mid mount motor, the handy thing is that the front derailleur is gone. So there's no shifting gears on the left hand side anymore. So a great place for the throttle on the left hand side. And you can indicate right with your right arm whilst using the throttle as well, which is pretty handy. Some people do actually, once they've got an electric kit fitted, lose the front derailleur. They, they find that they're not shifting gears, they just leave it in the largest chain ring. So if you do want to remove the gear shifters from the left hand side, it is possible. You do obviously lose a third of your gears though in most cases. The other thing about handlebars is if you are looking at a, a road bike, Drop bars are fine for fitting 
a display but not fine for fitting the brake levers the throttle and so on on the handlebars so drop bars do complicate things and if only if you want more than just pedelec pedelec should be fine um, on on drop bars or a road bike one thing I will say though, carbon fibre bike frames are not strong enough to withstand the um, sprung weight of a battery. So even though you might think you've got strong points um, for a hub motor on your carbon frame, which is possible, we don't like to do it without some improvisation because of the actual strength of the holes. They're not designed to take as much weight as a battery. So with the beautiful Gomia trikes, which are brilliant for people with balance issues or who want to carry cargo, the downside is they've got these single, single sided axles, stub axles, so we can't put a motorised wheel in the back. It's a bit of a drawback because putting it in the front we do get a bit of loss of traction, a bit of loss of wheel spin, uh, lots of wheel spin. With the motor in the front, and this is a very powerful motor with regen braking, so it's important that we actually do this on both sides. We've got torque bars here that grab on to the flat parts of the axle there and hold it, bracing the torque up to the forks. So this one's against the front of the fork and this one goes to the back of the fork here. So one side is capturing the acceleration force when the motor is trying to twist the axle in the opposite direction to the way the wheel actually ends up going. The other side is to capture the force of the motor turning back and flipping back when it's trying to regenerate. So uh, it's important to set those torque bars up, particularly um, in the front forks if you do have the motor in that position. So this is a brilliant way to get around. Electric bikes really are the way of the future. Sustainable, independent, comfortable transport that can do whatever your needs may be. So choose something that suits your purpose. If you feel challenged by any of the things we've discussed, you can call, we'll talk you through options. There'll be more detailed videos, uh, but we hope we can help you get the, the perfect solution to your transport needs. I've been Rev Becker. Have a very revy day. Nice.